What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Joe here talking about Kansas State University. The transfer portal is continuing to get hot and spicy, and we've got some big news to talk about today. Before we get into the video here today, guys, let me say once again, thank you so much for all the support on the channel. I mean, you guys have been going absolutely crazy for the channel, and I'm so appreciative of it. It means a lot to not only share the passion with you guys, but be able to come together and support a team we all care about. I mean, when I started the channel, I didn't necessarily think that really anybody would watch these videos, so having you guys along for the journey has been awesome, and I'm super appreciative of that either way. If you're interested in subscribing, we make K-State videos just about every other day, talking about Kansas State, talking about basketball, football, whatever we can. And if you're interested in subscribing, at 1,000 subscribers, we're going to be giving away another one of these super sweet K-State quarter zip lavenders. I love it. I wear it constantly. I think at the end of the summer, mine's going to be a completely different color, which is pretty gross to think about. But either way, if you want one of these, go ahead and consider subscribing. I appreciate it. It helps me out a lot, and it only takes a fraction of your time. Let's get into things here with the transfer portal and Ernest Uday Jr. Now, if you haven't seen the storylines, if you haven't seen everything that's just been dominating social media, Ernie, which is, you know, we're going to call him Ernie for the video. Ernie announced that he's going to be transferring three different colleges. We've got Duke, we've got TCU, and we've got the Kansas State Wildcats. Those are the three teams he's going to visit. And if nothing happens there, you know, whatever, we'll figure that out when it comes to it. But at the moment, like, the only team that makes sense as a landing spot is K-State. It does. And I want to shout out everybody in the last video that talked about Ernie and either said we don't want him or we do want him. And then every KU fan that said he would never consider going to K-State. That aged really well. So I just wanted to highlight that once again for saying that, you know, while I appreciate the comments, it's definitely a nice little jab back seeing that he's interested in K-State either way. But like with Ernie, the dude's an unbelievable athlete. The guy's an unbelievable player. Six foot 11. I think he's 230. I could be shortchanging him on the weight. But the dude's really an athletic specimen. I mean, he reminds me of like a taller version of Zion Williamson, 100%. Which, yeah, maybe I'm stretching it thin there, but like the guy can absolutely play. And I think in, you know, in the situation where like, with Kansas, they brought in Hunter Dickinson. As much as I love Ernie and as much as I love him on the court, how good he is, he wouldn't play behind Dickinson. He would not play over him, to say the least. He might get some rotational minutes, but that's clearly not what the guy wants. He wants to start somewhere and play 30 minutes a game, 28 minutes a game, even 35 minutes a game if you can figure that out, you know. K-State is the only school that really gives him that opportunity. I mean, TCU more so than Duke, but like, when I consider where he's going to end up, K-State's the only option. Think about Duke here. We're going to go through their roster as well, and I'll give you an idea of why I don't think Ernie sh should go to Duke and why I don't think he will. It depends what he's interested in. It really does. I've had a lot of people on Twitter say, well, he should go to Duke, you know. It's just a, it's similar to Kansas where it's a blue blood school and all this garbage. He needs a real full-time opportunity at a five-star producing university. I don't think that's what he wants. I really don't. I mean, you saw what happened at Kansas. Like, he's a top 30 player in the entire country. He is. Coming out of high school, the guy's unbelievable. You know, he's a five-star athlete that should probably end up one and dunning and has the potential to go and be like a Joel Embiid type guy where he can go to the NBA and absolutely dominate in a couple of years. Ernest didn't really have that opportunity. I mean, KJ Adams, who was a more experienced guard, more athletic, I would say at the time, took some of those minutes up at the five hole. And even though he's more of a four guard, KU rolled with him and left Ernie on the bench. K-State doesn't have that luxury. We don't have the luxury to say, you know what, you're going to sit on the bench, you're going to develop this year. We could use him immediately. Like, I know a lot of people want to sit here and say, well, he's from KU, and we wouldn't like that on the team at K-State, or vice versa. You know, he's from KU. He'd never consider going to K-State. At some point, these are just basketball teams. As much as we love them, they're just basketball teams, and they're kids trying to find what's the best opportunity. Duke has a thousand different dudes that are all five stars and 6'10 plus. That's the reality. K-State has Naquan Tomlin, who's a four. Our biggest guy in the five hole, like... Jarrell Colbert's our only center on the roster, I believe. He might even be listed as a forward. Ernie immediately comes in and starts over him. I love Jarrell. He's a great guy. I've actually met him, which is pretty sweet. Jarrell, if you're watching this, I love you. But realistically, Ernie takes that spot day one. You know, you think about the starting five, the only guy that might play over him is Tomlin. And Tomlin's going to be in the four hole the majority of the time. Like, it wouldn't make sense for K-State not to play Ernie. TCU on that same situation, like, they've got a roster that's constructed where, okay, they can, they're, they're pretty mobile. They can move guys around the lineup, but like, They've got some aging guys and even some young guys that are really in that spot. Obviously, the big uh, loss for them was Eddie Lampkin. Left TCU, went to Colorado, had a whole ordeal where he was calling out the coaching staff and kind of vice versa. It was a weird situation. So their center position opens up. However, they immediately bring in a kid from Coastal Carolina. I hope I pronounce this right. It's um, Asam Mustafa, I believe. M Mustafa, I don't know if I'm getting that right or not. But six foot nine guy, basically averaged a double-double, you know, 10 and 10. Like, the dude's a really good player. And I still don't think they'd play Ernie over him 100% of the time. You know, he'd be splitting minutes no matter what. We'll see what he actually wants. If he wants to split minutes and get big looks, he'll go to Duke, 100%. 
Let's look through the roster here real quick. I've got it pulled up, and I just wanted to tell you what's going on, why I feel good about K-State and Ernie. When you look at Duke's roster, is it a secret to say that they're, you know, everybody on the court's a five-star? Not at all. Not at all a secret. Not even a little bit. They've got guys like the biggest name that comes to mind, obviously, is Kyle Filipowski. Freshman season, he's a seven-foot center, you know, one of the best players in the entire country, probably goes to the NBA after this next season. He's coming back to Duke. They're not going to play Ernie over Filipowski. They've got guys coming in every single year that fits the description of Ernest Duda. And I'm not saying that Ernie is like a like a cookie cutter player. There's any type of way to say that somebody else fills his roster. But like, listen to this. Let's just run through the roster right now. Keep in mind before I get this, this is just the out of date roster. Derek Lively is going to the NBA for sure. Seven one center. He would take Ernie's spot as well. Duke has five or six guys like this. They've got two incoming freshmen that are six eight or taller in this case. Here we go. Let's move through here. The biggest names coming in here, Kyle Ketchings, six foot five freshman, not a huge guy, not going to take Ernie's spot. That one you can write off. Ryan Young, 6'10", 235, he's a grad senior. Maybe he plays, maybe he doesn't. I wasn't super familiar with Duke squad in that sense, but he's not one that I'm immediately like, oh, this guy comes in and is, is ready to go. Duke lands 7'1", senior Christian Reeves, 7'1", 245, and it's not just about their height and their athleticism. Like He played at Oak Hill. The dude is a certified beast. He's ready to go, and he's a perfect Duke player. Mark Mitchell. Freshman forward, six foot eight, two twenty. Kyle Filipowski, once again, seven foot two thirty, and he has absolute handling skills for days. Stanley Borden, seven foot tall center, two forty, sophomore player. Everybody on this roster, and there's still more names I'm leaving off, is constructed to be that big, dominating physical presence inside. And I'm not going to sit here and say Ernie wouldn't beat these guys out. I think Filipowski still beats him out, you know, handedly. But everybody else in the roster has the opportunity to lose it to Ernie. I don't think Duke's a team that's going to say, you know what, Ernie, you're going to be our center this season. Or you're going to be our power forward this season. There's so many dudes, one through five, that are all five-star athletes. Like, I would argue that it'd be impossible to find a three-star lineup, a three-star guy in the entire lineup for Duke. If someone gets in foul trouble, if someone starts playing bad or goes through a struggle, they have other options to turn to. K-State, like, I'm not just saying we're some, like, poverty school, we don't have options, but, like, K-State maximizes your potential because we have, like, we're going to rely on you. And I think that's what Ernie wants. He doesn't want to be a guy that's, like, rotational two or three guys come in okay I'm only playing 16 minutes tonight maybe next night I'll pay 28. K-State has the opportunity that you come in you play 30 minutes and if you stay out of foul trouble you play the entire game yeah the endurance is going to be a question but like that's the situation with Duke like if he wanted to be a rotational guy he would have stayed at Kansas 100%. I mean Hunter Dickinson is incredible he's the best player in the transfer portal he'll take up most of those minutes but he's still going to sub out of the game which would give Ernie some minutes on the court If he wanted to do that, why wouldn't he just stay at Kansas? It doesn't strike me as saying, like, he's going to stay just because he wants to be a part of a rotation or be at a big university. That doesn't mean anything if you're not playing in your mind. Like, putting a logo on your chest doesn't matter as much as people think it does. I mean, the guy can go anywhere in the country and play. Just about. Duke's one of the rosters that I'm like, it feels like that'd be the biggest setback for his career. I'm going to be honest. And this could age poorly. It could be terrible. He might win the starting job and be, you know, like, national player of the year. If it does come back to this video, that'd be unbelievable to see. He's going to be touring Duke today, and we'll see what happens. I I wouldn't doubt that they're going to try to woo him and say, hey, man, we've got time for you. We've got a history of developing five stars. We want you here, which is going to be pretty compelling. I mean, I know that if I'm looking to go to the NBA, which I'm sure he's looking to go to the NBA, he's an unbelievable player, McDonald's All-American. I think you'd consider it and be like, yeah, Duke will develop me. I'll I'll get going, but you might still have to wait to your junior or senior year, which I don't know if he wants to do. You know, I think he wants and deserves minutes now. TCU is a place he can get those minutes at, 100%. However, they still have guys on the roster that it's like, you still would play favoritism to them. Emmanuel Miller, more of a three-guard in my mind. He's listed as a forward, but he's like a two or three-guard to me. He's going to be playing over Ernest Duda in that situation. Jacoby Coles, who if you haven't watched TCU, the guy does a lot of the dirty work for them. He's the one that I think that hit the game winner in March Madness to advance him to the first round. Jacoby Coles plays over him. Uh, there's guys coming in like, let's see, I thought I saw somebody else on this roster. Isaiah Manning forward, probably doesn't play over him. I still think Assam Mustafa is going to take the starting role. 6'9", 250, athlete, he can go up and get it. He's from Cairo, Egypt, fun fact. He's a dude you probably play over Ernie. I mean, a guy coming in trying to learn the rotation, like, yes, it's in the same boat, but I feel like when you invest that much in a player, I think Ernie wants a spot that he can anchor down and be like, okay, this is my team. You know, I'm ready to be the guy. K-State's roster is built like that. I mean, think about the guys on our roster that might take a spot. David Gasson, who realistically is a four guard. He's played center for us, but 6'8", 6'9". He might even be 6'7". I forget. I think he's 6'8", 6'9". Playing the center position 
is he's really a forward. You know what I mean? It's like putting Ish Masood at the five, which we did at times and it just didn't work out. That was a reality. Jarrell Colbert's the only one that can really compete with him in terms of size and stature. That two center rotation would be nice. I mean, it's Colbert's first time for K-State to get actual minutes. I don't see the Cats giving him like 30 minutes a game. You know what I mean? If Ernie comes in and plays 28 minutes a game, 32 minutes a game, then you get Colbert if there's foul trouble or if there's anybody just needing relief. I feel good about that situation. K-State has a need. Ernest Uday Jr. fills that need. K-State wants him. He wants some school to play him. And one of the three schools he wants, K-State, TCU, Duke. Duke will play him, but sparingly. They won't always give him the minutes. TCU will play him and they'll be the closest to K-State. But it feels like Kansas State is going to be the option. And I could be wrong. You know, maybe he does have that passion for Lawrence where he's like, I could never wear purple. I could never do that. That doesn't feel like it at all at this point. It really doesn't. Like, if you're even entertaining the idea or going to cam- to a campus visit, you could play for them. It's a serious consideration. You would play for them. And K-State needs a veteran big guy in the portal. This is the dude we want. This is the dude we want 100%. He's still got four more years of eligibility. Maybe, maybe three more, depending on how the COVID stuff works for incoming freshmen. But the dude can play, and we're ready for him. We need guys like that. You know, we brought in three different freshman guards like Dada Ames, RJ Jones, Michaela Rich. Michaela Rich is the closest in terms of size. He's six foot seven. I think he's 230, 240. Built very similar to Keontae Johnson, which I'm excited about. He's not going to take the center spot. Ernest Uday has a position to fill at K-State. The coaching staff wants him. Think about the big name players that have transferred from one Big 12 school to their rival recently. You saw people all over the conference getting absolutely kicked out of games just for saying the wrong name. I mean, you had guys at Texas, guys at Iowa State. You had different people around the conference. Kevin McCuller probably got 100 people kicked out when they went to Texas Tech. Like, teams will do that. Imagine what happens if a KU center goes to play at K-State. If he doesn't go to K-State, it's whatever. I mean, I want him at K-State more than anybody in the entire portal. I think in my mind, he is the perfect quintessential K-State player. But you got to think the rivalry is going to take another step up. Like, there has never been a single player to play his freshman season for KU and then sophomore season for K-State in the modern college basketball era. There hasn't been. Ernest Uday Jr. could be the first of that. I think it's a real opportunity. He's touring Duke today. We'll talk about it a little bit later on. If he commits, obviously I'm going to be heartbroken, but we'll talk about it either way. And then he's going to tour both TCU and K-State after the dead period. Let's see what happens. I'm excited to see what happens. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you like the video, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. We're giving away one of these super sweet lavender quarter zips at a thousand subs, and you can have one for yourself. I'll post a video when it's time. Once we hit that threshold, all you have to do is be subbed to the channel, then comment on the video, and I'll get you in the running either way. Other than that, guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day, and go Cats!